Um, welcome everyone, uh, either here or online, for I think uh, the first uh, uh, online or an offline uh, QTAC 360 seminar. Uh, so it's very great to see. Uh, today, Yoshi Shaha will present. I think he has a presentation of over 100 megabytes. Uh, so it will be quite an extensive presentation, I guess. Uh, but Yoshi also has uh, a very rich background. So Yoshi is an uh, associate professor uh, at UNELF. He did his uh, PhD at uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology in 1996. Uh, and he still has some affiliation there as an associate professorship. Um, highlights of Yoshi's career uh, include many things, including the monolithic 3D IC um, found that using single grain TFDs in 2008, uh, carbon nanotubes, um, and the first solution to process flexible sil silicon TFDs on plastic, uh, and on paper. Uh, and the QTEC, its focus is on the fabrication of scalable qubit and advanced packaging, packaging techniques for the integration of qubits. And so today, Yoshi will present about free integration technology for modular for a monitor a computer. So with that, I want to give the floor to you. Yeah, thank you, Menno. Yeah, welcome everyone. So today I will talk about 3D integration, technology for modular quantum computer. So today's agenda, first I will explain what is 3D integration in the classical electronics. And then I will explain what is modular quantum computing based on spins in diamond. And then we'll, I will introduce some challenges and the research we are pursuing in 3D integrated modular quantum computer. And I will also introduce a quantum sensor. So these are the challenges and that I will address and then discuss with you. Okay, this is evolution of the classical computer in several decades until today and future. You know, the computer was a, a huge system at the beginning, only the industry uh, was able to use. And then uh, things become smaller and smaller, it becomes personal, it becomes mobile. And now we have uh, uh, many computers, right? So how these are uh, uh, made possible? The key word is integration, okay? I will explain step by step how these are evolving and also uh, in future how things will evolve. So first, uh, uh, 3D integration before we step into 3D integration. So this is the first uh, uh, computer chip in Dell made 50 years ago. It uses 10 microliter process technology and number of is 2000. This is the first integrated circuit using planar technology, using wafer. Now, 50 years later, uh, my uh, MacBook Air and your MacBook Air has this chip. Uh, M1, they use this five nanometer technology in TSMC in Taiwan. It has got 16 billion transistors in one single chip. This is extreme, the large scale integration of transistor made possible by nano radiation. This year, 2022, we have a new chip announced by Apple. It has a five times uh, transistor count. Why? Because this was uh, not uh, increased by process technology, but just tiling four chips. That is called a, a, a multi chip motion solution. Yeah, so making smaller uh, process is difficult. Yeah, there's some limitation. And size of the transistor, I'm sorry, size of the chip increases also. So this is not on scale. So in 50 years, size of chip becomes 10 times in area. Now uh, in two years, it became more than four times. 
Yeah, it's a little indication here, right? Yeah, uh, which should be small. Okay. What is the solution? There is another direction to integrate. This is a vertical direction with 3D integration. Yeah, uh, as, as you see the schematic, by stacking chips in vertical direction, the area becomes smaller. Or if you have the uh, same area, transistor count increases. This is obvious, right? So smaller chip could print with 3D integration is one. Uh, Point. The other point is that in 2D integration, the interconnect is very long. So suppose you want to connect this circuit block to this block, you have to run all the way in millimeter or centimeter lengths. Right? But in 3D, the distance between the layer is uh, one micron below. So the interconnect uh, distance becomes short. And why interconnect is so important? Because delay of the uh, computer, the process technology and generation is no longer limited by transistor delay. Okay, transistor delay is exceeded by interconnect delay. Okay, already for some years. So your computer is not limited by transistor speed, but interconnect speed. So making shorter interconnect is very important. So 3D integration makes shorter interconnect. So if you uh, transistor will be uh, sorry, computer chip will be high speed, or if you maintain same speed, you get low power. The third point is that you can stack. Uh, so this should be big. <laughs> you can start many different uh, chips with different functions or even different materials. So heterogeneous integration is relatively easy in 3D integration. 2D integration, the uh, manufacturer doesn't want different uh, process in the uh, same plane. 3D integration. Each layer is optimized by the uh, optimized process, and then you can start them. Okay. So smaller, high speed, or and or power, uh, and increased functionalities. This is 3D integration. Okay, let's look at how we make 3D machine chip. Uh, this is a uh, flip chip technology, so called. We prepare two chips, okay? And you flip one of them and stack on top of it. And in between, you have one by vertical interconnect called micro bump. Again, this is important. Micro bump should be small to make sure that you have a dense, a small each interconnect. This is a conventional way. Uh, you have a couple of electrodes, one chip. The other chip has nickel electrode. In between, there's a adhesive layer with uh, solder. And this is a conventional way to say, but because of uh, additional adhesive layer, you have to align uh, 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 adhesive layer as well. So the alignment accuracy or size of the microphone is big. You know, uh, the non 10 micrometer or Recently, uh, Sony uh, made an announcement, a presentation, that, that there's no uh, adhesive layer between two chips. Copper is the electrode of each chip. They are directly bonded. This direct bond technology made this uh, very dense uh, micro bump possible. Okay. It was 2018, uh, and last year they start selling this camera with this chip, and it can record 8K video of three, uh, 30 frames per second. Wow. 
אני נסכם, אני צריך להתחיל מים. יש לך כמה... ‫פרויקט טכנולוגי ‫with microbound is important technology in civilization. ‫סקנד is pick and place. ‫אז how does it work? ‫לוקס סטרנג'. ‫אוקיי, פרס, ‫אתה חייב להגיד ‫איך טי או איך סרקט is working. ‫אוקיי, פרס, אתה חייב להגיד ‫כל טי, ‫ואז אתה חייב להגיד ‫איך זה, ‫ואז אתה חייב להגיד ‫איך זה, ‫ואז אתה חייב להגיד ‫איך זה, ‫אז אתה חייב להגיד This is called pick and place technology with good and no good tie. Uh, who has the newest iPad Pro? The one? Pro address. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it here. So the newest iPad Pro has got a micro LED uh, display using this pick and place technology. So what it does, it does we have uh, LCD screen, instead of having big backlight, it has got small uh, LED backlights. What it does is that it will, it will locally dim the backlight. So if you watch nice movie in dark background, it can dim it locally. So you get very high contrast image. Okay. So uh, this technology has been used already uh, for display. Okay. So become base improves manufacturing yield. And air technology is so-called monolithic integration. And this is ultimate technology. This instead of stacking chips or layers, this technology just keep fabricating layers on top of each other. So there's unlimited layers you can stack uh, each other. So in the past, uh, we have showed that we grow high quality silicon layers uh, as grown by laser crystallization. And we have uh, demonstrated a 3D series of brother and 3D 60 death round. And we also demonstrated a uh, main sensor, uh, pixel uh, uh, at a uh, sitting on top of the amplifier and we have circuit. You know, the uh, CMOS circuit, you need two transistors, okay? Uh, SRAM is six transistors. It occupies huge area. Now you can start uh, NMOS transistor, for example, on top of PMOS transistor. Its area is about half. Also, uh, in a sensor, we can process image of pixel level. Okay, okay. like Sony's uh, uh, main sensor can uh, image process levels. Okay, so these are the uh, 3D integration technology in classical computer. So let's switch to quantum computer. Yes, yeah. yes. I was just wondering about this, the different basic, how do you I mean, the way we do it is very uh, intensive, but mm -hmm. uh, how do you make, how does the work on an industrial scale? Okay. Yeah, this question is uh, uh, how, so in the industry, how to manage the base, which could be uh, manual intensive, right? So this, uh, so there's a machine which pick up base with very fast speed. So this has got thousands of LEDs, we can place very high speed in a manageable way. The point is that alignment accuracy is not that uh, stringent. Like micrometer is okay. You don't care about it. like this alignment of LED is fixed. But story is different in quantum. I will discuss that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You mentioned that uh, the information nowadays about the public information. My question is what's uh, the fastest way of communication? Is it the network on chip mm -hmm. or the uh, 3D chips as the fastest connection? 
question is uh, more about the length of the conditions or of the So, how questions how to manage the length chip? Uh, yeah, I didn't explain, but uh, one, one of the solution is to lower resistance. This is the uh, aluminum by using copper at the industry extended delay of interconnect somewhere in the key. So the uh, short and the delay time in the main. But even copper, we are facing problems now. So we are how do we solve the problem? And I think one of the problems should be cross noise. Cross talk noise. Yes. That's a different thing. <laughs> We here we talk about only delay. Okay, uh, how to mitigate this problem? Yeah, we have to find a, a, a even smaller resistivity and cup. Or my personal uh, is activity, optical internet. This will solve the problem. Yeah. But things are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Russian. Just to continue your question from. Uh, yeah. Right. So. I was wondering with this technique that you uh, actually measure a device and continue fabrication. Mm -hmm. In foundries, I guess simultaneously, there's a lot of requirements on what you are allowed to put in certain tools and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, are there also then limitations on the tests that you can perform? Yeah, testing is important, right? So, I should be quick with uh, test structure. Uh, after test structure applies, Something like 25% of coaching I heard. It's, it's very important actually. This die, this is in between the process, right? Yeah. And there are also activity going on. The testing is really yeah. Can we move on to quantum computer? <laughs> <laughs> this is the main topic. Yeah, this is the, the logical number of qubit. Process here. I brought uh, what is realized by now. So now uh, we have computer with about 100 qubit. And now with this number of qubit, we can generate uh, molecules without uh, error corrections. Okay, this is called uh, 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 noise intermediate. Uh, scale on computer. So we have been already in this era, and if you increase the number of qubit, you can calculate uh, medicine, new medicine, or maybe crypto. But at this point, about one million, you get uh, error fraction and you get uh, for tolerant quantum bill that everybody wants. Okay. So what is important, again, to increase the number of without scale integration? That's one. But this one million crossing point is based on some assumption of fidelity. So if you lower fidelity, you don't need extensive error operation. So this crossing point will be lower. So you can realize what the point of the value. That's two. Second is that uh, if you connect, if you, if you can connect more qubit, you can create more uh, logical qubit. So you can create actually a uh, complex uh, algorithm. So again, with increasing connectivity, you can lower the session. So in short, all these three should be uh, realized, but I will explain all these three are uh, uh, not easy to achieve. Actually, that uh, uh, conflicting each other. So let's discuss how to make one computer. Okay. You need a qubit. Two is not enough. You need uh, many more, right? You need many more. Okay. So suppose this two qubit operate uh, two qubit operation. Okay. okay. Here's the problem because the other qubit, which is not operating, is nothing else than noise 
source. Okay, you will keep it inside of generic uh, magnetic field, magnetic field. So this makes noise. Okay? So noise deteriorate pitality. So as you increase number of qubit, pitality goes down. And this phenomenon has been observed in many systems. This is one example of famous Google paper of superconduct pitality. So as you increase number of qubit, and as you increase, uh, as you involve, involve more qubit in calculation, pitality goes down. Yeah, so how to mitigate this problem? The answer is easy. It's to separate them, okay? So you have some motion, which contains some uh, number of qubit. Then you separate them, you connect them with long range qubit copper, okay? So now you have uh, two of the best words, module increase, Number of qubit. Long range copper takes care about mediating noise. So, how to make long range copper? Uh, there are many proposals. Here I show two examples. One is electron shutting. So, again, here is a cluster of qubit, cluster of qubit module. Between them are connected by shattering electrons. Second is optical link. Again, we have a module which contains no qubit, are connected entangled by uh, photons. Optical link. Yeah, which one is better? It's difficult because I, I'm also a of this paper. <laughs> <It's in general. laughs> This talk is about optical link, so let's <laughs> analyze. <laughs> right, optical link has no other advantages. advantages. So, first, again, if you have a module contains a qubit, in this case, carbon 13 in diamond, and you have color center, color center takes care about entanglement between the module. So what are the advantages? The first is optical link provide uh, entanglement with high fidelity, even with long distance. This is because we use the photon. Second, uh, carbon 13, big uh, recipe in the amount, uh, has very long coherence time, more than one minute, which is demonstrated. Third is that Entanglement between all pairs of electron and nucleus means are possible. It is called GPN3 state. So connectivity can be increased. And last but not least, is spins in diamond operates at high temperature. So more than one. Okay. So last point is particularly important to make it small. Okay. So when the uh, qubit operate on the mirror Kelvin uh, glow, you need a, a big dilution region, which right? you have it, <laughs> it is a human size uh, uh, bridge. Okay? When the qubit operate at 4K, around 4K, you get a very small crankshaft. Uh, is the size of espresso machine. Okay. You can downsize the uh, entire system into a small uh, uh, system. Also, you can be including power to many details. Okay. So this is advantage. So diamond qubit will provide this uh, small size computer. I know many of the writing about increasing pressure to save the qubit in general. And this is the one feature of the answer we have done. How the, the color centers in diamond works? Color center is localized defects in diamond with uh, beauty. 
and the Linux. Uh, electron is charged, and you can see, the fluorescent light will emit if you excite this, this beam. Okay. So, for example, uh, red light is emitted. This is called zero phone line. It's very sharp peak, and there's some broad peak on the side band. The uh, qubit state can be measured through optical measurement. First of all, uh, electron spin is triplet, ground state already, so we have zero and plus minus one. And then, furthermore, a magnetic field space plus and minus one state. This is zero minus one. And then, microwave pulse can control coherently between zero and minus one. Plus one. And then again, uh, we radiate green laser. Side electron, uh, side state, and then zero for non line emit strong uh, fluorescent light. And then, so intensity is high, and intensity is very weak for a minus one because it's on side. In this way, you can uh, distinguish between state zero or minus one, and with changing magnetic field, you can uh, so. It's a different frequencies. So in this way, can address a uh, different thing. Entanglement between uh, electrons in a diamond is where several locations are demonstrated. Ronald Hanson, uh, in the following way so you prepare two uh, electrons to, to uh, be moderated locations. First, entangle uh, uh, signal from the uh, emitted from the center and the return by resonant field. So you can, and then you prepare two of them, you uh, overlap them at green speeder, and when you observe in the distinguishable photons, two locations, two photo detectors. To electrons are entangled. So these are being demonstrated. Carbon 13 is that exists in natural uh, diamond. This can act as a uh, qubit. In Tamina group uh, demonstrated uh, entanglement between four pairs of electron spin and nine nuclear spins. With uh, long coherence time of over 10 seconds. Okay, so what are the challenges? So, one is <clears throat> to increase the entanglement rate <clears throat> that are currently in our hero hands. Okay, and there are two ways. The one is to increase photon correction efficiency. So, diamond has. High refractive index. So that's a problem to take up photons. So, what can be done is uh, make non structure that optical resonance and resonance, and then to increase uh, intensity and to take out photons in an effective way by, for example, photon crystal. The second is change, is change uh, color center. Can be sent up only uh, create three percent of the zenfono line. Team latency, for example, can create higher efficiency. Uh, uh, in Stanford, a uh, group of group uh, combine those two, team latency and protein crystal, we demonstrate a very strong and sharp peak. So these are uh, uh, promising uh, paths. Okay, uh, so far, uh, this uh, quantum is based on uh, spins in diamond, based on uh, open system and connected with fibers. So, this is a photo of the Samsung group. This whole clear table is for a few qubit, and this uh, qubit is connected with fibers. 
connected uh, uh, many cities are planning. So this big project is going on in Quantum Military Division. So now uh, this project to Fujitsu is to drink it, everything into a single chip. So all the uh, cubic in diamond, all the electronics through uh, photonic uh, interplant, all of them are integrated inside the chip. So uh, compared to, for example, iron truck system, because we use a uh, uh, solid state system, can use non application. Basically, we can provide large scale integration of cubic. That's one. Again, fidelity can be kept a high, even number of cubic increases because of optical uh, link. Uh, third, because of GSS, GSS state, we can increase the connectivity. So all these three conditions that I mentioned at the beginning, they will be met with this approach. So we announced this uh, collaboration with it is uh, in the last end of uh, 2020. And we started uh, working on it. And a group of uh, my uh, team is working uh, on 3D integration of this uh, modular quantum building. So it combines flip chip technology that I mentioned. And monolithic integration approach. So, monolithic approaches for our integration of diamond, magnetic generator, and super photonic circuit. Flip chip is uh, taken to integrate the crash chip. So, we have additional advantages with the integration. Uh, the cost is again smaller chip size compared to 2D integration, because simply you can put uh, chips on top of each other. Second is, as I mentioned, heterogeneous integration is possible. Now we need to integrate diamond and the silicon. 3D integration is uh, best suited for this kind of heterogeneous integration. Also, we can integrate electronic circuit and photonic circuit. This is also a continuous integration. Additional advantage is that now the optical internet is very short compared to fiber system or system. So you get low optical loss. And this will, uh, through the theory, uh, bring us increased entanglement rate. So this is the additional advantage. It's uh, 3D integration scheme. What are the challenges? So, we are integrating all these uh, components. There are engineering challenges. Okay. For example, there are material challenges to ensure that have uh, a low resistive material, you should have a uh, reliable internet. Uh, there's challenges press process. We need a very fast scale process, especially in diamond. You have challenges in, in device. We need a pro power uh, electronic circuit, trading and quadratic temperature. Also, uh, a photonic circuit should operate also pro power. So I will address. Uh, all of them. The first is about diamond. Okay? The problem of diamond is that the uh, size of diamond is very small because we need a high quality diamond, and this is made only by so called high pressure, high temperature process. So typically, diamond has a size of a few millimeters in square. This prohibits us to use uh, manufacturing uh, process equipment. So we have a process. There are heterogeneous, that's uh, heterosexual growth of diamond, 
deposit on the Florence River. The problem is that there's some defects, complete soil strain in this location, also impurity and strain in the material is is uh, issue. There's a report about direct bonding of diamond on silicon rubber. Uh, this uses so-called hydrophilic uh, direct bonding. So basically, you form a water uh, molecule into to chips into diamond and silicon, and dry it, you get covalent bonding. This is a promising uh, approach. Then you can prepare uh, coarsey, high quality diamond. The problem is 100 diamond cannot be bonded on silicon dioxide. Um, so that's a problem. So we are working on this uh, to solve this problem. So we uh, clean. Uh, this Pionia uh, solution, and we treat single uh, backside inside uh, plasma, and then uh, we optimize for this substrate and uh, cleaning process. And we manage to have a strong direct, strong uh, direct bonding of one zero zero diamond on SR. So the uh, idea is that we prepare a <coughs> course large high quality diamond river with only many diamond and, and proceed with <coughs> application. <coughs> so JFL uh, got master thesis with this. And Bernard is now studying uh, as an intern and surveys a quarter using this substance. So, one of the projects. Second project is integrated photonics. Okay. Integrated photonics is uh, the enabling technology by routing and detecting photons of many cubes. Of time. Okay, especially because recently the silicon photonics industry they have standard sets of passive and active components that you can design, then interpolate, and then get tens and certain. Problem is that many of foundry focuses on uh, telecom wearings. Diamond, many uh, color centers works in visible wavelengths. We have to optimize the structure of design in anyway. the Second is the uh, silicon photonics does not care so much about power. And on the uh, because of limited cooling power, uh, everything should work at low power. So that's the challenge. Heterogeneous integration, again, integration with diamond, integration with electronics. This is a challenge. Also, optical IO at cryogenic temperature, reliable, uh, low loss. This is a challenge. Okay. Uh, Shri Chan is working on uh, designing and making optical switch. Optical switch is a, a very important component in photonics. Uh, we took um, uh, Alibaba and Capra, so we have two uh, web guys, uh, Alibaba and Capra, with men's uh, actuator. So we have two uh, web guys, and top web guys will be. We go to the lower bed type with the main structure. So, this can operate at low power and now what level of device and relatively fast switching in the micro second. 
and silicon nitride has low transmission transmission loss in these buildings. Also, uh, silicon photonics foundry uses silicon nitride. So uh, this idea of the company will catch the light. And then bend light to the line degree. So we can uh, run photons, uh, just simulate that uh, yeah, the upper power of the kite catch almost from the light photons. Another topic is uh, pick up the base. So, the uh, possible problem is that the yield of the uh, nano fabrication of diamond is not 100%. Again, uh, we measure uh, characteristics of diamond and no, no good cavity and big place and no good diamond device on top of photo insert. So this has been demonstrated by MIT uh, the challenge is we have to uh, adiabatic couple between uh, diamond photon structure and real -correct. So you need a sub uh, uh, photon wavelengths uh, relevant accuracy. Okay. So we might demonstrate it a relevant accuracy 50 nanometer, which is uh, great. So we are assuming similar technology, but uh, with Integration diamond on silicon nitride, and we estimate 90% coupling with optimal structure and 90 nanometer with alignment we have 50% decrease. Okay. Arm and PhD and Sarira and even the master student, and they are working on. Okay. So the topic is cryogenic electronics. So this is the current implementation. So you have um, bulky uh, electronics instruments directly controlling the qubit at a low temperature and press that. The problem is that uh, the cable uh, transfer the heat from uh, room temperature to low temperature. Again, the okay. question has some limited Cooling power. We can mitigate this by uh, main integrating uh, electronics inside a uh, chip, and thereby you don't need uh, direct control from electronics to the individual qubit. For a uh, qubit in diamond, you need a magnetic generator that. Uh, Controls thermal uh, splitting between two states. Thereby, you can individually address qubit with different frequencies. So, Maurice and Sarah are working on making a monkey freeze generator array between qubit array and Kuraosimos. Simos chip is made by Fabio Sebastian. And Masud group. Uh, and we are both making a uh, superconducting coil for each uh, qubit to control magnetic field. Okay, so uh, Maurice made a simulation, simulation platform, also made a test uh, superconducting coil, and they will measure. And soon as heading is back. Okay. So we are excited. The last topic is microbank at graduate temperature. Uh, this so solar pump is a conventional way. A solar pump is a non solar conducting, so it has high resistivity. So it uh, creates geoheating. Uh, so this is not good for cryostat. Uh, also, uh, mechanically, uh, solders becomes dictated to brittle. 
My face changed at pleasure. Also, uh, there's high summer expansion mismatch in Satan. So all of these create uh, unreliable uh, micro in quality damage. Indian instead is good material for plagiarism because it is a soft material even at pleasure temperature. It becomes super metal, 3.1K. Uh, this is a bit lower than the temperature, the pressure temperature in the center. And to bond between indium, we need adhesive layer. Again, additional adhesive layer increases alignment accuracy or increase uh, bond size. So in summary, challenges in micro bond in cryogenic is high TC, small size, end of page, and high reliability. And we have reported that we can bond between neodymium nitride and neodymium nitride without adhesive layer. And we measure a uh, critical temperature of neodymium nitride is 15 K which is better about uh, any center equation temperature. So this is suitable and center application. And we can make small uh, microbomb because we don't need this layer between. We bonded between them by uh, high temperature at uh, pressure. We measured uh, uh, daisy chains so called many Contacts, three contacts, and we measured very similar uh, 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 contact resistance as the aluminum. We didn't measure collagen temperature yet, but uh, um, follow up. Okay. okay. And last topic uh, three d integration uh, quantum computer can also be used for uh, sensor, quantum sensor. Uh, Yanis and Rubens, they are working on making high sensitive uh, biomolecule sensor with uh, uh, MV diamond that emits in, uh, photons. And MV center is good the magnetic sensor. Okay. So suppose you have cancer cell on top of uh, one, uh, in the center. Some specific cell uh, react with uh, NV and emit uh, some particular photons. So these are detected by a uh, single photon crushing power to diode that are uh, integrated in 3D. And we hope we get uh, this beautiful uh, bio image with this sensor. Okay, with this, uh, I will conclude my talk. So, modular quantum computing uh, based on speed and diamond provide three contradicting demands that is, uh, minimum uh, negligible cost log and high computability. And, uh, and large scale integration. 3 integration is key enabling technology of this modular quantum building. I discussed uh, several engineering topics, material, process, device, and circuit. And probably some of them are also common, but uh, keep system, also uh, quantum sensors. So, we want to work uh, with many of you. Okay. So please contact us. I'm going to acknowledge the first uh, lab members, we increased number of students. We have heterogeneous group now, in nationality and diversities. And I'd like to collaborators. I'd like to thank my collaborators in Gutech, Gisele, and TNO. 
also a Kutitsu team in Japan. I'd like to mention uh, this research is supported by uh, this project of Kutitsu and Team Rev, also uh, matching fund by the uh, Netherlands Enterprise Agency. With that, uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, for your presentation, and also uh, thank you for answering the question. Everyone wants to know when we'll have fun. I'm sure she's uh, about to do a tasting chart. Um, if there are any questions, also online, I can't see you, but just uh, be brave with yourself and shout out or raise your hands if you're present here. Uh, yeah, yeah, can I? Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, my question would be. And I think that in, in classical computing, uh, we've been trying to get 3D chips for a while, but uh, I think heat is one of the main issues. Yeah. Do you think that will be a big limitation for the 3D inspiration for quantum computing as well? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So, um, yeah, how do you deal with heat? Is the integration? Yeah, indeed, heat is the problem, especially uh, CPU. CPU, if we uh, start on top of each other CPU, we get problem, right? So it depends on the functionality, right? So CPU should not be stacked. <laughs> CPU will be integrated in the plane, but there are other functionality, right? Like uh, auto dials, uh, memories, and some simple processors, these can be integrated in 3D. Yeah, many things are going on. To correctly scale it up, then it should be. Yeah, yeah, correctly, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Maybe to follow on that the question. So, regarding cryo CMOS, um, so first of all, can you explain what kind of components you expect there? Uh, and um, you argue that the heat load for all these wires, that that's one bottleneck, but at the same time, you also operate at 4K. So is that still really the main reason, or is it the interaction itself uh, becomes more feasible with your prices? Mm, yeah, question is, yeah. The cryo CMOS, okay, so uh, the main motivation is indeed to decrease number of cables. This is really problematic, especially uh, high frequency cables, uh, gigahertz cables that uh, transfer uh, lots of heat. So that's our motivation, but, but indeed, CryoCMOS uh, itself also generates uh, heat. So low power CryoCMOS is a challenge, and this is done by the popular suit. And what was the yeah, component? So the other question is actually what kind of CryoCMOS? So uh, that depends. Uh, yeah, it could be CMOS, right? Anyway, it could be CMOS because of low power. Um, I think Fabio and Masud should answer that. <laughs> uh, let's see, are there more questions? Yeah, at least guys. <laughs> yes, uh, first of all, thank you for your really interesting talk. So, I had a question. So, you were talking about this modular quantum computing where you have these modes that they have to be separated by a certain distance to minimize the cost of. Um, I think I'm missing it, but how much has this distance to be to minimize the cost of between the different modes that you have? So, yeah, it is a good question. Uh, so, yeah, how, how, how long is the uh, long, right? Yeah. So this does is uh, basically this does that qubit doesn't fill the, uh, the other qubit, right? Yes. I'm not supposed to answer the exact planets, but this is a planets that uh, you need, right? It should not be too far, it should not be too close, right? So it's somewhere between that qubit and all. The motion doesn't feel uh, motion, right? Yeah. <laughs> All 
Any questions online? I don't see that. Um, but you go for it me. So I have another question. So if you can you show the uh, the image where all the components work together, the part of CMOS and so forth? Yeah. Can we maybe comment on the different sizes? So both uh, vertically as horizontally, what do you envision the spacing? Mm -hmm. And also let's say in future implementations, how small would it be and so forth? Yeah, the question I mentioned. Um, yeah, I must say we are designed this and we are not scared that we can answer exact dimension. But uh, yeah, again, yeah, we want to integrate as many as possible and separate them. Yeah, <laughs> I can only answer that. Yeah. We are still busy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. If there are no questions online, then let's give Roshi another big round of applause. Okay.